So a calculational trick that every student of physics, engineering, or any science should see at least once is how to integrate the Gaussian function. The Gaussian itself is a ubiquitous function that pops up all over the place in a variety of fields, and so it's super important to see how to work with it. So let's go about calculating this. So just to recall what the Gaussian is, it's the function e to the minus x squared. What's fascinating about it is if we calculate the area under the curve, that is the integral from negative infinity to infinity, the answer somehow comes out to be the square root of pi. So how is that? Now if you've never done this and just try to apply the math directly, it's difficult, but we're going to employ a dirty trick. Now that integral, assuming it's finite, is some number, and we're just going to call it i. And i squared is just the product of these two integrals, and if we multiply them together, we get this. Now note that in both cases I've used different variables. That's because we're going to pull everything inside the same integral, and we have to keep track of which variable is which. These are really independent variables. Now if we want to plot this, these two completely independent variables, we can do so on a Cartesian plane, uh, where each variable is, say, the x and the y-axis, respectively. And in this case, we're just summing up all the little area elements uh, that have area dx dy at each point multiplied by the value of that function. That's really what the integral is. Now we notice something about this plot. The quantity x squared plus y squared is the distance from the origin squared, r squared. And really in this picture, it's a function of one variable. And we're going to use polar coordinates to do this. Now the little area elements have width r d theta and length dr. And instead of dx dy, an area element is r d r d theta. So r goes from 0 to infinity, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and that's how we cover the entire plane. Now, our integral looks like this. There's no theta dependence, so we can just pull it directly through, getting 2 pi. And for the r dependence, we have this residual r, e to the minus r squared dr. Now surprisingly, this extra r out front actually makes this integral much easier to perform than the integral without an r out front that we had before, e to the minus x squared, say. Why? Well, we can let w now equal r squared, such that dw is 2r dr. And we divide both sides by 2, so 1 half dw is r dr. And we can replace the r dr in there with a dw. Now our integral becomes 2 pi from our theta integration times 1 half dw times e to the minus w. The 2's are going to cancel. And this integral, e to the minus w, is quite simple. It's just e to the minus w with a negative sign out front. Evaluating it at its endpoints, we get minus e to the minus infinity minus minus so plus e to the 0, which is 1, and this whole integral is just 1 out front. We multiply that pi that was in front of the integral, and we get i squared is equal to pi, or i, which is the integral that we wanted to solve in the first place, is the square root of pi. And that's how you evaluate this integral.